Ancestors, we offer the smoke this morning. We come to you facing a time, a day, a moment of transubstantiation, shaking off the horrors and the blackness of pandemic, facing an equally dark moment and climate collapse, extinction of species, including our own. Ice shells drop. Fires blaze in blue sky, a black tornado, a fire tornado. Horrors, suffering. Things are not what they seem. Shaken, to step, to stand, what to do. In this moment, in this moment, we breathe. We look about this circle, this community, this virtual fire of consciousness. We have you. We have each other. We have you, Mother Earth. Let us cherish you in the way you cherish us. And so remember and renew.
all my relations. Amen. Thank you, Apila. Uh, thank you, Ruth. Greetings, everyone, to our monthly Chartres community call. Uh, we have been convening this call for the past 16 years now, month by month, as each year we use this monthly call to prepare ourselves for the next pilgrimage that we're going to make together to the sacred site of Chartres in France. Uh, we're preparing uh, for our next pilgrimage, which will be the 13th through the 19th of August at a time of the Feast of the Assumption and a time when the Black Madonna uh, is elevated uh, and adored in the cathedral. Uh, so we welcome all you pilgrims and all of you who are contemplating joining us uh, for that uh, pilgrimage uh, to that sacred site. As we begin this morning, I want to bring you some news, which is a little sad, but uh, I know most of you know him. Uh, Rick Buckley, who normally is the uh, tech support for these Chartres community calls, who has been uh, at our annual gatherings a number of times. He's the one who's always been filming and recording, uh, as those of you who've been there will remember. Uh, he's been the tech uh, support for our Humanity Rising broadcast that we just uh, had our 450th session uh, over the last week, as day by day, we continue to bring um, an opportunity for people all over the world, now in over 130 countries, just to come together and share their experiences of what it's like going through uh, the world right now, as uh, Pila uh, just uh, described, uh, and take counsel together and build community together. And Rick has been a stalwart partner of mine, along with Georg, who's uh, uh, doing the tech support today, um, as he has for many, many years now, uh, in partnership with Rick. Well, this past Monday, uh, Rick did not show up for Humanity Rising. And I called him and emailed him because everybody was gathering in the green room. And I finally, I reached out to Georg and Georg in an instant. Uh, just took the controls, and um, but uh, Rick never showed. And so as soon as uh, the Humanity Rising session was over, I called his wife, who was up in Washington uh, with their daughter and new grandchild, and uh, she immediately called uh, Kinsey Buckley, uh, their son, who lives in Mill Valley, California, where Rick is, uh, and they found him half in and half out of the bed, and he'd had a massive stroke uh, that had paralyzed the left side of his body, uh, his right eye, um, and uh, his speech uh, was impaired. So obviously he was rushed to the hospital. Uh, and uh, Karen called me just before we went live today with the report that he's now in uh, the premier stroke and severe injury clinic uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, and yesterday there was a triumph because he, for the first time, could swallow. Um, and that gives you a measure of the severity of the stroke, uh, but also the reality of that strokes are remedial. Uh, it's like neuroplasticity. So depending on how quickly you get to them and what you do immediately afterward, et cetera. There's all kinds of possibilities. Those of you who know Rick know that he is ebullient of spirit. He has a heart full of golden positivity and he's literally the nicest guy most of us know <laughs> or certainly one of them. Uh, so I just wanted, just in is, is our community of prayer and, and love and support. Uh, I just wanted to bring Rick's situation uh, to our council today uh, and um, ask that you pray for him. Uh, looks like uh, I'll be able to go see him uh, later on today. Uh, so he's making uh, good progress, but still 
um, dealing with some very um, powerful issues that have afflicted afflicted his uh, his body, uh, but not his soul. So that's a report I just wanted to bring. Uh, today we wanted to look at the ongoing astrological constellations in uh, our solar system uh, as we traverse uh, what has been a very turbulent year on top of a turbulent two years with COVID, with the invasion of Ukraine. There's been many, many requests. What on earth is going on? What are the planetary alignments uh, telling us we should be expecting or holding in mind? And uh, Lynn Bell, who is one of the founding uh, faculty of our Chartres Academy, going back all the way to uh, 2006, uh, has been uh, on uh, Humanity Rising and uh, course and um, on our Chartres community call. And we have a very important um, uh, day coming up on the 12th of April. Uh, so we thought we would have her uh, talk about it. And uh, uh, Banav Shea knows a lot more about all this than certainly I do. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Banav Shea, with many thanks. And you'll introduce Lynn and uh, guide our discussion. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Thank you, Jim. Please take our um, love, our prayers to Rick as you go visit him today. Um, I see that people have put in the chat also prayers for- Yes, our, thank you everyone. For our beloved colleague and friend and really truly one of the nicest guys you could ever meet. I, I, I feel that Rick has so much positive energy and uh, with everyone's prayers and love pouring toward him that he will definitely pull through. Um, as we're witnessing the splendor of nature, everyone, in this glorious month of April, we, we will also be showered by the magical and unifying blessings of, of this very auspicious exact conjunction between Neptune and Jupiter in Pisces, uh, which happens every 166 years. Uh, this conjunction is said to open us to higher spiritual dimensions and help us step up and uh, remember and activate our soul's purpose. So we thought it would be um, a great idea to ask our resident astrologer, uh, Lynn Bell, to speak to us about this conjunction coming up on April 12th. And uh, what, uh, what kind of energies uh, do we have the opportunity to work with? And I also hope that, Lynn, you will speak to us about the astrological um, situation, that, uh, what the stars will be like, what the planetary alignments would be like in August when we, are, um, when we will be visiting Chartres, when we, when we will be doing our pilgrimage for Venus rising. Lynn? Okay, I should be here. <laughs> Hi, Van Um, Well, some of you, um, well, first of all, I was really profoundly <laughs> um, moved by uh, what Jim told us about Rick. And I think this is very much how Jupiter Neptune works in that it touches, it is about higher consciousness and it also touches us on a dimension of very deep and profound feeling. Um, Apila began talking about the planet. Um, uh, we have this sense of great sadness. We are touched in a way, I think it's, it's very striking that Jim began today by touching us all with the news of Richard uh, where we can feel, uh, we can connect our hearts to him. And this is part of the gift of the Jupiter Neptune, which is no boundary, no boundary. The boundary is thin between us and the larger world. Uh, the Jupiter Neptune conjunction is, um, some of you would have done a workshop with me with humanity rising earlier this year. And um, it's part of what I talked about, that the, there is this notion of boundaries being swept away, 
Now, we're seeing this on one level, uh, the boundaries of our world, the sense of what we can control, what's solid, where we can hold, where we can stand on this earth, on the ground of what we know, um, in the world we recognize. It's all um, like the rug is pulled out from under us. But at the same time, this rug uh, is the Jupiter Neptune is like the magic carpet. Um, it is, we're, we're in both places, both in the sense of we are asked to let go of something and there are things being washed away in our world. Um, so it's very important that the process is working on more than one level. There's also a notion that certain things we are letting go of because when we let go, we create room. Um, we create an opening, we create room to come into something else. So the Jupiter and Neptune, I've been noticing it coming in the sides where um, incredible experiences that people are having are dropping in, or there's the sense of being in exactly the right place at the right time. And um, a friend of mine uh, sent me a dream she had. Normally, Jupiter and Neptune gives us extraordinary dreams about how we are connected with the divine, with each other, with this time and space. And uh, she had a dream of uh, her mother who had died a year ago, who was in a place of extraordinary beauty and there were colors and smells. And um, she saw all these people come to her, talked about how her mother had touched their lives, how uh, the, she saw that a smile that someone she talked to every day and said hello to, the effect that had on the person in this other dimension. So one of the things that we have access to right now, we, is a larger dimension. Uh, something connecting us on a much higher level. I'm sorry, there's a phone ringing in the background. It's almost like someone's trying to call me in another, from another space. And it's slightly, even though it's really in another room, I can kind of hear this going on and it's a little bit odd. Um, speaking of calls. Uh, so the Jupiter Neptune, I've seen it come in. I don't know how many of you watched um, the, the acceptance speech that was given by Jean Benoit at the Grammys last week, who said, there is no, thank you for this, but my deepest belief is there is no best album, no best song, no best musician, no record of the year. They're all incredible creative contributions. We're all doing our best all the time. The music we're making is all extraordinary. And he, um, uh, he went on to say um, that he wanted to thank everybody who was involved as people do. He said, that he'd listened to the music of the other artists who were nominated and he said they'd all given him out of body experiences. Um, and then at the end he said, and even if I don't know you, I thank you. Even if I don't know you, I love you. And it, to me, this was that moment where someone's given a spot um, and we don't have a chart for him, but he has Moon and Jupiter in Pisces, and which were, are being activated by this big conjunction. And many of us are put in situations at this moment. We could say that Richard is at an intersection of something in our lives where we touch the great this great feeling of empathy or connectedness. I. This is also happening through. Um, um, another uh, energy that is coming in, 
uh, which is what we're seeing in the Ukraine. And we talked about this last week, this kind of sense of the senselessness of the way that we can watch one human being harm another and what it wakes up in us as a mirror opposite, as, as a desire for the goodness and the healing of the world. Another place where I saw the Jupiter and Neptune come in were, were in these incredible images of bioluminescence, of plankton in the sea that lights up at night. Uh, there, there's a very rare phenomena where suddenly the ocean was filled with light. And of course, that is the realm of the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, this, the realm of the ocean. So while our attention can and should be on what is being lost and what is being, and the suffering in the world, our attention also can and should be on a possible access or opening to um, the divine, to messages, as Banafshe said, this conjunction happens every 166 years. Now, the Jupiter and Neptune, the reason the cycle is 166 years is it goes through all of the signs, uh, the Jupiter and Neptune conjunct every 13 years. The last conjunction was in 2009. And when I look at these conjunctions, I see that each time they come together, they connect us in new ways. They give an opportunity to bring people together through almost a new vision of the world. So there's an individual connectedness. The, the, the divine, the sacred, is always there waiting for us to find our way. It's always there waiting for us to find the connection. There's this sense, if you want to connect with the conjunction, um, it would be great if maybe afterwards Banafshe could give us a movement because she's um, so good at invoking that, even if we're only using our arms or our hands. But when Jupiter and Neptune has to do with our faith, that we are in the right place for us now, right? whatever that may mean, um, that uh, where does the faith connect? Where do you feel it with inside, within your inner experience? Where does it come through and begin to flow in your life? Uh, where can you connect? One of the things um, I was taking the course on um, uh, the medieval cosmos uh, in a, a university uh, astrology program that studies the history of the culture of the sky, culture and cosmos. Uh, and uh, they were talking about uh, the philosophy of the soul in the middle ages and how there was a belief in the animal and the rational soul. And I asked, so, Will an intelligence have its faith in the rational soul? But where does faith, where does faith have its source? And uh, the instructors in the course couldn't answer this. And as I myself ask myself this question, where does your faith have its source? Where does your connection to something higher come in? Um, and one of the ways. Um, that I, that I feel it personally is almost as if there is a flow within the very top of my skull, the inside of my, the inside of my skull, the lining of my brain, almost like a fountain opens here. And there is a, um, a way that this fountain or this opening um, is again available if we know how to connect to it. If we think of it as Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces are about water. In 2009, we had um, an economic, the economy essentially fell apart and many people lost a lot. 
Uh, and certain people had trouble getting back on their feet or recovering from that loss. And at the same time, this was the moment where we became connected to each other through, uh, on, a, on a global level, through social media. If you look at the graphs of how people come in, of how they are connected over time, uh, the numbers shoot up in 2008 and 2009, just it's, it's, there are people, but there is some exponential thing that suddenly we can all be connected. And this is what Neptune and Jupiter is about, is asking us to see how we are all connected. And you may ask, connected, where are we connected? Where is my attention? Where is the vision uh, for me? Um, and faith right now uh, is we can all feel that the old world in which we were all grounded has is, is being dissolved, that chunks of it are falling apart. We can see forces rising where people want to compensate with beliefs that seem regressive or conservative. And for each of us, though, there is this opportunity in the next few days, and particularly on the 12th, of uh, connecting to something. Now, what's important, it's not that, although this is the most powerful moment in the cycle, it's not the only moment, that this is a seed moment where a new vision of what the world can be is coming in and being activated in each of us. Um, the pilgrimage to chart, uh, which is the 13th of August. I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Just going to put up some. Um, before I talk to you about chart, um, I wanted to mention that in April, so we have the 12th and we have another day, um, Venus, which is the planet of love, boundless love, is going to also join Jupiter and Neptune later this month. And Ju Venus is said to be exalted in Pisces and Jupiter and Neptune are the rulers of Pisces. And this conjunction, this coming together of uh, first Venus joins Neptune on the 28th and Jupiter on the 30th. This is a period where the wave of love, the energy of love can move, um, can lift the world. On the 30th as well, there is an eclipse of the sun. Um, and what we might hope is there is some experience of the spiritual, of the divine that comes in and gives us an ability to uh, connect in a larger way. So we're in this heightened period, the 12th, and it's reinforced at the end of this month by the passage of Venus. In August, um, it's, um, it's quite a fascinating time because the pilgrimage to Chart will begin with the moon in Pisces uh, close to Neptune. So again, with these same mystical energies, uh, with this ability to touch into something larger than the self. And one of the things that's extraordinary for me when I come to Shard is um, that we enter a space in which all of us together create a field. We enter the extraordinary field of the cathedral, the extraordinary field of the ancestors, of the people who were there before the cathedral of the Carnutes, we enter the energy of that place, the energy of prayer, the field of prayer, the field of the divine. 
and it lifts all of us and connects all of us. The other thing that's happening on the day the pilgrimage begins is the sun will have just opposed Saturn. And this is a moment in the year where the sun will be coming to an opposition to Saturn, excuse me. And it's a moment in the year where we commit, we look at how we want things to come into being and we make a commitment to something on our own path. We make a commitment to others. We make a commitment to ourselves. We make a commitment to what is emerging in the world. Um, where is our intention in this new world that's emerging? Even if in what we're seeing, we're seeing again, what's being lost, as we come together, we will have this opportunity to see what's, what we can create, what can, we can do by being together. And uh, this for me is the real value of being there um, together. Uh, there are other things that I will talk about more when we get to that time period, but these are the things that I would begin with, is this very um, strong connectedness with an experience of something going on in the world with the loss, uh, with the inability to hold certain boundaries, uh, to accept that certain boundaries, certain species, certain lives have been changed, certain beings have been lost, uh, living creatures of the earth, and at the same time, to be open to what will come in. This conjunction is often a conjunction of the ideal. Uh, it was in effect when the United Nations was formed, when the League of Nations was formed. And there is a need for a new vision in the world right now, a vision that's not just about countries with guns, but a vision that's about humans and the entire planet. And somehow, um, in spite of the sense that this doesn't seem to be there right now, I think this is we're seeing evidence to the contrary. We know that behind this, something else is coming through. Banashe, I'd like to open this up a little bit um, to you and to um, the participants. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you so much. That was very illuminating. Uh, <laughs> I would love to hear what others, what questions people might have for you. Yeah. And this notion of how to connect energetically, um, this idea that you could give us a gesture. Well, I feel that um, what we're uh, being um, blessed with is the opportunity to literally step into experiencing the interconnectedness, the oneness. Mm. Um, in our own bodies so what what is normally felt as separate and as um isolated to relinquish that that can be easy more easily surrendered into coming yeah. into this unified sense of mm -hmm. being so it's not just an idea but a literally but literally an experience yeah and of course you're so uh, gifted at putting people in touch with that experience through the body but it is true that even the even when our life is touched by um, sadness or our empathy, that also opens up. It opens up the boundaries of what we're able to receive. Mm -hmm. So I think we can see part of what's going on in the world also as um, working on all of us on different centers. Yeah, yeah, totally. I I relate to what you're saying with sadness, um, our, our um, defenses kind of melt away a little bit. They dissolve, mm. just, like, just like tears also soften us. Mm. So this um, dissolving, this melting into the greater. Mm. Let's see. 
if others have questions for Lynn. Well, this was a comment of someone who was praying for others on a vigil this weekend, drumming opened my body in a way I'd never experienced. So I could be home on that land at the same time. Uh, Raquel says, illumining, I would love, Banerjee, if you could give us some movements to connect deeper on the 12th, 28th, and 30th. Will the opening for this not new ideal be during all of August? Uh, Valerie, that's a really interesting question. The opening uh, with Jupiter and Neptune, one of the things is this is the, there's only one conjunction, one seed moment, but at the end of the year, Neptune, Neptune will move very quickly into Aries, and then it will retrograde back into Pisces later in the year in uh, late October. And the last two months of the year, Neptune and Jupiter will be together. And so it's a period, there are two periods of inflowing, influx. Um, as we come into chart, the moon will connect with Neptune and then with Jupiter and Chiron. And it will um, be, it will empower a series of planets in the chart that I'll be speaking to you about every day. Uh, and we'll be working with that in detail. Um, the, on, on the day of the opening itself, the moon is opposition Mercury. And these are the two sides of the mind. Mercury is the informational mind. The, the, what do we know? How, what's the word for this? What's the name for it? How do we sort things out? And the moon is the mind that receives and takes in um, yes, the seed moment is April 12th, but then there's again like a great, you could, you could imagine that there is a showering down from the cosmos that comes again at the end of the year. So it's not like if nothing's happened on April 12th, nothing has happened. It's really, it's really important to know that there's a kind of a softening and a connecting and a rising up. But pay attention to your dreams. People are telling me extraordinary things at the moment. Are you getting this feedback too, Anoushe? I am getting this feedback and I'm experiencing it myself. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I just happen to have my son in Pisces, so that's <laughs> the reason that I can't. <laughs> Right, you would be you would be a, a, a complete receptor for this. Really stepping, but it's where uh, where, I mean, as a Sufi as well, I think there is that space that creating the space for the divine, um, and also in the holy time of the year, uh, uh, there is that sense of being so much closer. I mean, I'm very aware of it. It's for those of you who don't know, it's Ramadan at the moment. And uh, because there's a large uh, Muslim community here, there is a, there's a fervor uh, in a lot of people who are fasting until the end of the day, uh, until, until the sun sets, which is sooner here. But a lot of people don't drink or eat between sunrise and sunset. And then they gather with loved ones and share all kinds of wonderful, they share uh, stories, they share offerings, they share delights of all kinds. And they welcome the divine in that sharing, they welcome love. Um, so it's a particularly propitious moment if you're in that tradition. Yeah, and it's also the beginning of the uh, Holy Week uh, today. Yes. And, uh, Jim, would you like to say something about that? What uh, Ruth opened us, what she opened with was a, was a song that is related to uh, the Holy Week. Yes. And well, this is a, the day, this is Palm Sunday uh, mm -hmm. in the Christian calendar when, as the tradition recounts it that uh, Jesus came into Jerusalem in a celebratory uh, supreme moment of uh, adulation by the crowds who took branches of palm trees and laid them down in the road before him as he 
rode into Jerusalem uh, sitting on a mule. And uh, obviously, uh, within a few days, the tide had turned. And uh, by next Friday, uh, called Good Friday in the calendar, uh, he was being crucified. Uh, but this was his moment of, of triumph uh, moving into Jerusalem. Uh, but Lynn, I had a, uh, an experience that I wanted to uh, check out with you, uh, given what you say, because it didn't occur to me um, till just now with your illumination on this uh, Jupiter-Neptune conjunction coming up. You know, I was in this uh, uh, a, a decision pathway uh, that had taken a, I would say, a, a limiting and negative direction. Oh. And decisions had been made, and um, all of a sudden, I I went into a meditation actually, and I was contemplating uh, the matter. And all of a sudden, I felt a surge of both boundlessness and I would say cosmic empathy. Wow. To the opposite and realize that the constriction that had gripped us as a, as a, as a decision-making group had taken us into a, a, a negative space, as it were. And what was needed is going to the opposite of empathetic boundlessness and possibility of new creation. And I actually set some things in motion uh, that were initially confusing to some people because everybody thought we'd made the decision. And I'm realizing, listening to you, that I was possibly under the sway of this conjunction and something in me just popped into this Neptunian uh, uh, spaciousness and this Jupiterian uh, exaltation of possibilities. Right. And uh, is that basically what you're talking about? Yeah, it, that's exactly. That, it's like we all live in too tight a set of clothes on a certain psychic or spiritual definitely. level. We're all fitting ourselves into yes. a way of being in the world. Uh, and to and what the Jupiter Neptune is is suddenly we experience our true dimension. All right. Yes. And I. You know, it might be an instant, it might be a glimpse, it's night. But at the same time, when you're in Jupiter and Neptune, it's, it's, it's almost like you're taken to another sphere. Uh, so it isn't a place necessarily of rational decision making, but you're taken there so that you see things differently, so that mm, the scales fall from your eyes, if you like. It's exactly what happened. It's like the scales fell from my eyes in this, this cosmic ocean of possibility and compassion uh, mm -hmm. that seized me with such power um, that uh, other things began to happen. Um, and I'm just realizing that I was under the influence. <laughs> under the influence. Yeah, and you know, Jupiter and Neptune are the planets of being under the influence. They are, yeah. their negative shape is, you know, whoa, high, being <laughs> high. Uh, and it, because, because they are about expanded consciousness. And if we can't get it any other way, we get it with a plant or a, or, or right, right, drink right, right. something or a substance, or we we dance with Bonnarche and we uh, or we we go to Chart and we step in the circle, and we 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 have all these ways of touching this sphere. Um, Paolo uh, uh, Morley Fletcher asked me for the time of the conjunction, and of course I'm aware that on this call everyone is in a different time zone. So the exact time of the conjunction in Paris, in Central Europe, where Apollo and I live, uh, are, is a 4.42.51 p.m. Um, so what does that translate to? On the East Coast of the United States, it translates to 10.42.51. And on the west coast of the United States, it's 7.42.51. So- it, um, It's the moment we start humanity rising on the oh, 12th. Really? I'm gonna remember that. 7.42.51, yeah, yes, yes. On, the, on the west coast. And if you want to use a, a 
British GMT, uh, it's probably 24251 GMT. But if you just, if you put in, just think of how you do for the call, right? Uh, how to uh, be connected to this timing. I'm actually um, um, uh, uh, connecting with um, <laughs> that day with uh, uh, Colette, who I met through the first chart journey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, so uh, you know, again, the mysteries of time and space and how people come and uh, move back into your life. You know, one of the things, just so I, I want to track it because it was such an important moment for me, but I, I, I'm just beginning to have this reflection, Lynn, about what you were saying that you have the seed moment on the 12th. Right. But that it ink because it's attitudinal and I would say intrapsychic, uh, it then incubates and comes to a, a, a greater fruition, um, you know, some months later, uh, right. like in August. But it's it's really something uh, that's striking me as uh, a, an attitude in a conflicted, turbulent, constrained world that we need to continue to cultivate in ourselves so that we don't get caught up in the constrictions that are are seemingly so real like the invasion of Ukraine mm -hmm. and what's going on on a daily basis we shouldn't be allowing that constriction to influence our inner capacity for the Jupiterian Neptunian that Neptunian spacious ebullience would that be a fair statement? Um, yeah, although I do, I do have to say, that, you know, again, we'd all rather feel ebullience and divine gratitude and inspiration. And that we have to remember that it's connected. It's almost like my fingers connect here between the, empath the sadness and the empathy and the exceptional that, that these are one as an experience um and that but that together we can enter into something which is so important because it the more we enter into it the more we hold the field for a change that is a change we would like to have and not a change we wouldn't like to have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah great thank you so much this has been I very helpful to me yeah, and I think this year at Short, there is an intentionality. Uh, I, I really want to start, there's a couple of things that give me that notion of intentionality, that what is it, what is it we will do about this? Mm. Right. Where is it that we will put our energy? Where is it that we will be um, moving forward? Yeah. Well, you know, as in that spirit, everyone, I just want to underscore what Lynn has been saying about the importance, both astrologically and in terms of our community, of, of coming to Chartres with us. Uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, challenges, uh, the residual challenges of COVID, uh, the acute reality of uh, war in the Ukraine, uh, but I would have strongly urge all of you who can to join us in Chartres. I put the link in, I'll put it again in a moment. Uh, but if we could all come together in our, in our numbers and really consecrate ourselves at this most uh, opportune moment between the 13th and the 19th of August, I think this will be a, a Chartrean experience that we will remember for a long time. You know, we've been going there for 16 years. Uh, and this, uh, 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 will be, I think, particularly memorable because we haven't been there uh, since 2019. Uh, so to make that effort under external challenge to can nevertheless create the intention of being in that sacred place of the divine feminine together uh, feels to me um, uh, very deeply important as I've been holding it with Apila and with Banafshe and with Lynn and with... Uh, uh, Eve Ensler, uh, who, as you know, is coming, and Jackie Lewis, 
um, uh, who's a, a minister uh, in a congregational church in New York, uh, what the world really needs in this moment, particularly uh, given what's going to happen on the 12th, is, is apology and reconciliation and healing as love within us and between us gets regenerated after the siege of lockdowns and, and isolation and social distancing. Just imagine all coming together uh, in a big group hug in Chartres <laughs> uh, uh, with the powerful telluric energies of the Black Madonna and the Great Mother. Um, uh, I just, I just, I can just feel how good that's going to feel uh, for all of us, and want to encourage everyone to to, to join. Yeah. Um, so, Bonapche, sure. is there anything sure. you would like to? say or Lynn, any final words you would like to, to bring in before we close out for the day? Well, I, I, I'd love to have Bonnefche in, but I, I, um, I, I did, one of the things in France is, is today because I saw people walking, they don't get palm fronds from church on Palm Sunday, but they get little branches of a plant that are given. And I saw people walking with these branches everywhere. And I went to a, 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 a wonderful, park garden not far from here just before this call and it, it everyone is out and about there is COVID but it's almost all everyone has some form of immunity to it right now so mo for most people um, the symptoms are very mild and we're very it's it's it feels like life is back here and um, there's a kind of joyousness to that um, so even if you, so what I want to say to you, there's an opportunity to step into the world in a way that feels freer again. And that I think is, um, as we come together, again, we will affirm that. And I'm so glad that some people are already registered and coming and Amanda, um, it'll be wonderful to see you there. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Jim. I feel that um, it the is important. Go, I don't see your camera. Oh, there you are. There you of course, it, it will be memorable to come together again. And we haven't been in Chartres for the past two years. But also, um, what's so important, what Lynn, you were saying about uh, the intention, bringing our intentions together for a new story, a new vision for our world. And, and we feel there is probably um, very few places as powerful as Shard to really come together and dream together, bring our visions together, pray together for our world, for the earth. Uh, this has been a place where people have prayed from time immemorial uh, mm. before even the cathedral was built. So there is, um, like Jim says, very powerful Toluric energies, which we will really focus ourselves um, into with chanting, with movement in the cathedral, I'm hoping that we can do that, that we can have prayer circles that uh, in the cathedral where, we're, where we sing, where we chant and we pray with our bodies. So it's going to be a very, very powerful time, especially with um, Lynn, what you were saying about the uh, planetary and constellations at that time, and that it is during the week of the Assumption and the Black Madonna is yeah, in the course. cathedral for all of us to commune with so readily. So it's all so very exciting, and I hope that we can actually go, that, that um, the, the ways will be open, that we can go and be there together. Shall we bring the call to a close, Jim? What do you think? Yes, I think this is a good time to bring things to a close. We know this is Palm Sunday and Ramadan for many of you, uh, so we don't want to go beyond the hour. But uh, thank you so much, Lynn. You're so illuminating each <laughs> time. Uh, and it's always striking to me how we're we're going along and we think we're in control and we're making decisions in our own head and we're doing whatever we're doing. <laughs> Then all of a sudden you bring in the cosmos and the planetary alignments, and then you realize that we're in we're in a vast 
cosmic ocean of interconnectivity mm -hmm. and that what we're expressing and what we're feeling is being so profoundly but subtly in a highly nuanced way we don't even notice we're being profoundly influenced mm -hmm. by the alignments uh, of the planet so uh, just thank you for bringing that in it's been uh -huh. it's been very very uh profound so thank you and what's so exciting is that Lynn is going to do that in shard for us every day. About <laughs> what is going on in the greater cosmos. So oh, yeah. that, I really look forward to that. Yeah. I so, so everyone, can we, um, before we close, can we come together and bring our hands to our hearts and close our eyes, please. Flow with your breath. I'm going to invite all of us to hold our dear Rick Buckley in our hearts. And together hold a smooth and swift recovery for him. Shower him with our love and healing energy. Surrounding him, surrounding him with light, the light of healing. And taking a deep breath, please. And exhale, may it be so. May he recover soon and swiftly. And open your eyes when you're ready. Thank you so much for holding that circle with us. And with all that Lynn has shared with us, this great opportunity for humanity to step into experiencing our interconnectedness and the awareness of the power that we have to really truly birth something new. So I hope that we will take this time to journey inward through meditation, through dance, journey inward to silence and stillness, to really tune into what the universe wants to birth through us. And may we dream big, may we dream big, a new dream for all of humanity to live in peace and oneness with the earth and with the greater cosmos. Thank you so much. So much love to you. Till next time. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you uh, next month uh, for a discourse on the great goddess Aphrodite. Oh. will be what we're going to talk to uh, next month because it's under the aegis of Aphrodite that all of the third liberal art takes place. Thank you, Bonafshe. Thank you, Lynn. Bye for now. Bye, everyone. Love to you, everyone.